Hello and welcome to the Fair Film Podcast. Today we have Luke from Action for Effects. Hey, what's up, Zach? Happy to be here. It's a pleasure to have you come on as a big fan of Action VFX. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been really cool. I know we've talked on and off for a couple of years now, but uh, I'm excited to actually be able to get face to face or as close <laughs> as we can uh, in, in pandemic world uh, and chat a little bit today. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on. So you want to introduce yourself just in case the viewers don't know you? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so my name is Luke Thompson. I'm the chief operating officer of actionvfx.com. Uh, at ActionVFX, we create visual effects stock footage for filmmakers, visual effects artists, and studios. So we'll film explosions, fire, gunshots, all of that exciting stuff for real. And then we'll clean it up and sell it to studios and artists that can use it in their own projects. Um, so focusing on the action stuff, but we also have particles, smoke, some maybe less exciting uh, or at least appearing less exciting things, but very necessary to creating high level visual effects. So, yeah, that's that's me. So I like to start off. Well, this for a question. I always like to start this off. So when did you get started into filmmaking and what what you what you wanted to be like a visual effects artist? Yeah, that's a great question. So I uh, just, you know, growing up, I've always been uh, like gravitated towards technology in general, whether that's the latest, you know, Apple innovation or any other just big thing that can potentially change how people work and how people behave has always been very interesting to me. So that kind of overlapped a little bit into my love for storytelling and just the video medium. And so those things kind of went hand in hand for quite a while. Um, but really as early as, you know, 10, I'd already started showing an interest to new technologies, uh, just being able to like take things apart and figure out how they work. Of course, at that time, I couldn't put them back together. So <laughs> it was just more of getting old things and uh, breaking them, being super destructive. But that kind of grew into this thing where I, I, you know, picked up a camera, I started telling stories um, and trying to find these narratives to build around and where that merged with technology and my love for it, it just naturally progressed towards visual effects. And so I started freelancing as a uh, just very generalized videographer uh, when I was 15. So that's when I started taking my first paid um jobs and gigs. And from that point, it was just kind of building out and realizing, hey, I have a skill that people pay money for, but it's something that I like. So maybe this can be a career. Like, And, and it's that uh, kind of working through and, and breaking out of a mindset in the area that I live in, which is very much, and it's gotten a lot better over the past couple of years, but it's been very much, you know, you grow up, you go to high school, you go to college, whether you want to or not, whether you're skilled in a specific area or not, you take on loads of debt if you can't get you know, scholarships and that kind of thing. And then you work at one of three really large uh, like uh, businesses in our area. So there's like a, a chemical plant, a healthcare system, and a couple other like things that kind of slide under that. But that's really like the, the dream for the people in our area. It's like a smaller town in East Tennessee. And I hated that. I was like, yeah, there's there's absolutely no way that um, I'm ever going to find any level of fulfillment or you know happiness, satisfaction in that. And so it was really cool uh, to kind of build that out. Really, when I was you know in like the high school age going into, went to a community college for maybe a month. And then I realized this is the worst thing in the world. And the things that I'm learning and paying people money for isn't even going to get me where I want to go. You know, so it's like if I pay money and do all this stuff and there wasn't like a visual effects program, but it was I'm going to end up with like a very general broadcasting degree. And that's not what I want ever. That's kind of the the long way around about trying to figure out that path of what that looked like. And for me, like I can tell that story linearly now, but it was very much like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like <laughs> just trying to take it one step at a time and, and grow from there. So when did Action VFX got started as a company and what's the story behind how it started up? Yeah, so that's a really great question. While I was freelancing, I mentioned I started uh, when I was 15 years old. I had taken on you know quite a few other jobs and eventually it got to the point where I connected with who is now our CEO, Rodolphe Pierre-Louis. And him and I met at a local uh, After Effects users meetup, which in our area, like that's not a thing. Uh, uh, 
especially five years ago, it, it was just like, oh, After Effects. Wait, there's other people that use this within a 500 mile radius. And so this group popped up. I was invited. Uh, Ro was also invited. Him and I both ended up showing up. It was the same time that, or the first time that each of us had been there. And there were maybe seven or eight people there, but we just kind of got connected and kept in touch. We didn't really talk too much at the event, but after the fact, we kept up online and then uh, like on Facebook and he posted, Hey, I'm looking for a behind the scenes videographer for a shoot that, you know, I'm doing in Chicago. And that really lined up well with the freelance work that I'd done in the past. And I thought it was just a really interesting and good opportunity. Uh, so I sent over some of my, you know, portfolio stuff, him and I talked for a little bit. And then we joke that I jumped in a van and <laughs> drove with him all the way to Chicago, which is about, I think it's supposed to be like a 12 to 13 hour drive from where we're at. And it ended up being like a 17 ish uh, because road closures. And then there was, there was actually, I, I don't think I've ever told the story before. So this is a, a exclusive private story, but while we're driving on our way there, it was just one thing after the other. It was terrible. But there was a truck hauling a bunch of like massive pipes. I don't know if it's for like an oil something, but they all came off. And so we're going through, I think it may have been like Indianapolis and really busy area. And all of these huge pipes just started like bouncing and rolling across the road. Oh and God. then cars are like hitting them and, you know, running into the concrete guardrails and uh we're just kind of like cruising through and thankfully we were like the perfect position behind to where like the pipes were still balancing but they were slow enough to where we could kind of go around yeah i got some of it on video not the actual like them falling off the bed part but that was just a random side note that i just thought of but doing all of that to chicago we filmed uh, what was supposed to be just like a, an action-based pack for Rose's current company at the time, which was uh, Rody Polis, which is our parent company now. Um, Rody Polis had done some, it was just him. So he had done some visual effects stock assets before, but it was not really anything directly catered at professionals in the industry, although they did use them. Uh, the products themselves, you know, weren't shot on red cameras and in 6k and all of these other things uh, that we had really tried to just kind of pioneer and make just raise the bar for the quality that was there so we took all of our behind the scenes stuff that we got at this first shoot the shoot itself did not go well at all um and we got back and we decided hey let's put together a kickstarter campaign to kind of pitch what we want to do so we used the behind the scenes stuff that I'd captured as well as some like more of like a proof of concept for we're trying to change the game for where stock assets are and equipping artists with better tools to tell their stories faster and save money. All of that kind of came back to let's craft it inside of this Kickstarter campaign, launch it. If it falls flat, then maybe nobody wants this product that we're making. Um, but Outside of that, you know, we put everything into it. I was still working full time, a regular, basic, boring job. And Ro just absolutely killed it. Uh, he has such a natural knack for marketing and, you know, storytelling, being a filmmaker himself as well. And so it was so beautiful to see like that page launch and really start to visualize this thing that we were wanting to do. It's like it was in our heads for a while. I know this moment he shared his vision with me of what he was wanting to do and how he was wanting to just change how things were. Uh, it was very contagious. And I instantly knew this is something I want to be a part of. This is something I want to help grow. And I think that I have the technical background and understanding to be able to do that and to be able to contribute to the team. So long story short, Kickstarter ran for 30 days. Our goal was to raise $20,000 because we felt like that would have given us enough to put back into another shoot. Uh, we ended up raising $59,000 in 30 days uh, from 446 different backers, which was so cool. Like it was just so encouraging to see one, like we can work super hard, kill ourselves to make something and it works. Like other people see the value in it too. They're willing to put their money where their mouth is. And also um, just that there was a need and like the response that we got was just so positive. And there was really only, you know, one other big pack, if you will, at the time, but it was still very, it wasn't good, but it was the best that people had access to. 
And yeah, it's just the thinking is very different because for us, it's how do we change the way that people work by providing them better ways to do their work? Whereas some of the existing things that were around are, hey, here's some stuff that we shot while we were also filming this other production and we just kind of put it up on this website to sell. So I think our, our mindsets are a little different from, you know, what could be considered our competition. But as is, I currently see it, I don't feel like we have competition doing what we're doing. And I kind of wish we did because it would at least be like, all right, let's, <laughs> and, and, and we can get motivated enough, but yeah, it's uh, I'm very competitive by nature. And so <laughs> it's nice to have a clear, all right, let's do this. Oh, yeah, That's so awesome, honestly. So uh, what's your favorite product on the site? I know mine personally is the explosive fire packs, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. This is a hard question. There's so many. So right now, so yeah, yeah, there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot and they all have different, you know, uses and, yeah, that and then I have some that just have like sentimental value to me because mm -hmm. I know how difficult they were to make. <laughs> um, I would say one of the easier ones to create, but one that I feel is the most unique is, uh, our burning steel wool collection. Ooh, I do like that back. And it's, it's unique because by nature, it looks very like sci-fi, um, but it's an organic thing that we filmed in camera for real. And just the way that science, <laughs> it's like, that's all I'll say is like science. That's, that's why it's cool. But it, uh, and it can be used for so many different things too. So it's shot at a really high frame rate, so you can slow it down. And uh, we've done some like planet surface destructions. And it looks like, you know, the surface of the planet is like uh, burning and you just have all of these like fringe textures that really convey like there's a lot going on here. Um, and, you know, it's been used uh, one of the other. Actually, I think it was the first like public project that was used for was one of the more recent Bella Porch music videos. Um, there is like a wardrobe transition where she's, you know, in like an elevator and then her wardrobe changes from one to the other. But. While that's happening, they used a burning steel wool over that to make it look like it kind of burnt into this other uh, outfit okay. that she had on. Oh, that's really, really cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, that that one's probably, that's at least the first one coming to mind right now as being one of my favorites. Yeah, I gotta say, like, honestly, you guys at Action VFX are killing it, honestly, the game, honestly. Like, you guys are very successful. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank uh, you. So really what is your reaction to, like, these bigger film, like, companies, like, you know, using these products? Because that's really cool, honestly, like, to me, honestly. <laughs> yeah, so... um just like with studios in general? Yeah, like studios in general, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's really encouraging to see. Um, I think my favorite part, though, is being able to actually build and, and maintain and get to know the artists at these studios. Uh, so like, I feel like I'm a very relational person anyway. Like if I'm talking with somebody, I really, I would rather talk with one person at a party for 30 minutes than a hundred people for, you know, five minutes each, because I feel like I'll really get to know and like, just empathize with that person on a deeper level. Um, so yeah, the it's always really cool and fulfilling to see our stuff being utilized for the purposes that we, you know, have set out for it to be. And, you know, seeing all these AAA video game titles coming through and, you know, things that aren't released yet that we know are in production and we're filming new things and being able to give them to studios early so that they can go ahead and start implementing them and stuff. That's always really fulfilling and exciting. Um, but at the end of the day, for me, really, goes to a deeper why do I do the work that I do and for me it goes into the quality of life improvement that my own personal work can contribute to other artists that are in the trenches we were able to visit some of our friends at Crafty Apes they're a really large studio uh, they've got multiple locations we were able to visit them in Atlanta um, at the beginning of 2020 right before everything closed up, one of the uh, visual effects supervisors was talking about how he said like this one line that I think is just always going to be ingrained in my head. But he said, action VFX elements get me home to see my family at night. And what he was getting at was regardless of if they have the elements or the tools or the assets, those shots have to be done. And, you know, you, you have to figure out how to make it and how to how to create things. And so what he was getting at was he's still able to deliver the realisms there, the qualities there, but it's that time saving piece. And if I can get people home to see their families at night, 
that's like, that's what I want to do. And so that's one story that I, I think I kind of keep logged in my head while I'm working, while I'm building uh, new things or new initiatives. I always go back to the, like, why am I doing this? What's the, what's the point? What's the, the greater reason or the greater purpose? Um, and there's a, like, I have a lot of those personally that are different, but I think that that's just a big one that jumps out to me right now. So why is Action VFX is an important tool for like all VFX artists? I would say Action VFX is an important tool uh, for all visual effects artists, regardless of, uh, you know, specialization, because to some extent or another, by definition, if you're a visual effects artist, you're going to be combining plates, combining images. And all that Action VFX is at the end of the day is just a wide toolkit for you to be able to to have real things to pull from. I feel like, you know, being a visual effects artist and action VFX just go hand in hand because of not everyone has the ability to just run out in their backyard, film fire on a red camera, process it through the way it needs to be, and then get started on, you know, the the work that they're actually doing. And so, yeah, I feel like those are very complementary and even the tools and things that we build out, like our, the mission of Action VFX is to be that one common thread between every compositor's career. And so that kind of helps us align and see what else can we offer outside of visual effects assets, you know, whether that's community resources. Um, we are currently working on like a job board that is just for visual effects jobs, but there's some of those around there. But again, our approach to this one, I'm hoping is going to be like a much higher level that just brings value to artists that are looking for new roles because of the gig economy. And so there's just a lot of different things with that. But knowing Action VFX's mission of what that is, I think that helps us align much better with, hey, do we take on this project? Do we take on this partner? Does this align with our greater why? And is it helping us be that common thread uh, between every compositor's career. Um, so what advice can you give for upcoming uh, visual effects artists? Okay, let's see. I feel like the one of the most basic things that I find myself going into is just like, you have to start. You know, it's <laughs> like, I kind of fell into that trap as well when I was just getting started playing around. And, you know, the tools now, as we record this in 2022, are leagues better than they were six, seven years ago, even. And, you know, just with hit film and the advancements they've made, they've made it so accessible for people to just learn for free. And so there's no excuse, even if you have a really crappy machine or you don't have a machine, like I've even seen some mobile apps that it's like, you can, you can at least learn enough to, to grow. And, um, Finding where you're consuming content is also very important. I was heard this past week, I can't remember if it was a book I was reading or what, but he was saying that his personal like key to success was, he started by saying everyone is obsessed with something, right? So whether that's like visual effects or technology or video games or, um, you know, watching specific shows on Netflix and just everyone's obsessed with something. So if you're able to align those obsessions with things that are productive, that's kind of where the two form this like symbiotic relationship of I'm obsessing over this thing because I enjoy it almost like a hobby. But at the same time, this is advancing me in my career and this is going to help me grow. And so I think that's been a really big thing for me. I've also found like just staying curious when it comes to your, like how you see the world is very important too. Um, how do things work? How did someone do that shot? For me, it's also technology based. So it's, can I take this computer apart? What does this look like inside of here? Um, and, and how does all of that tie into our business and how either we do business, how we serve our customers, or the products that we make. And it's really cool to see, you know, with machine learning and artificial intelligence, there's just so many different advancements every day that if I don't have my sources that like news sources or wherever else that I'm checking and getting those updates for where I want and, you know, the, where I want to learn, then stuff's just going to slide by or I'm going, which I think is more dangerous is I'm going to follow sources or, 
just get taken away by other distractions that I may think are helping me learn and grow, but they're not actually helping me learn and grow in the right directions. Um, so, you know, channels like Film Riot are so great for just like practical hands-on, just jump in and go knowledge. Um, our Action VFX YouTube channel, we've started a lot of tutorials. We've really been putting a lot of investment and time in that. Uh, primarily After Effects, but we've also, uh, our plan is to just spread out across as many different software as we can. Uh, so we already have some Nuke tutorials, um, res- uh, Fusion, any other thing that we can. And if anyone listening to this wants to make tutorials for the the Action Effects YouTube channel, shoot me a direct message and, <laughs> and we'll talk because we're always looking for artists that can help us uh, do that and continue to achieve that mission, which is being that common thread uh, for every visual effects compositor and just bringing value to people because that's all that we really want to do. Um, there's just so many distractions in everyday life. And if we aren't intentional about blocking those out that we don't the, identifying which ones are distractions and which ones are making us productive and allowing us to move forward, then they're all going to be noise and they're all going to be distractions that just pull us from whatever goals we want to have. Um, so I would say focus, curiosity, and for anyone you know aspiring to be a visual effects artist. And yeah, you, you have to start. Uh, so if you're waiting on getting a new graphics card, an RTX, 3080 Ti, uh, they're never going to come in stock. So just go ahead and <laughs> <laughs> just go ahead and accept the fact. Um, and I'm talking to myself there, right? It's like <laughs> we're we're trying to build different mach- machines in the office, and it's just like no, like yeah, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, honestly, like I totally agree with that. I was like, you have to start where it's somewhere. Honestly, like I started off from the iPhone, honestly, and then you know mm-hmm. I started build my gear from there you know learn more experience stuff like, i mean it takes time honestly like yep you don't want to invest in something like you haven't really like i would say like really like try yet not to lie yep definitely um so favorite vfx from a film and why hmm okay favorite vfx from a film uh specifically using action vfx or just generally speaking uh just generally speaking like any film out there hmm okay even though there's already so many films out there. <laughs> yeah. I will say first one coming to mind right now, and it's because of the level of, and there's a lot of innovative directors and filmmakers that merge technology with storytelling. And so I naturally gravitate towards that a lot, as I've already mentioned. I want to say, I'm going to say Avatar, yeah. just because the time and love that went into like crafting that world and those characters and i'm super stoked for you know the next set of of films yeah i've i've got the pleasure of knowing a couple people that are in production uh, working on them now and it's just it's mind-blowing and i i think if they're able to really just pick up where they left off and continue that level of innovation you know cameron even said he hadn't made the film before then because the technology wasn't there yet. And I feel like I can relate with that a lot. And I have all these different ideas for the company for stuff I want to do or make, but there's some things that just aren't there yet. So if I can backlog those and say, Hey, those are, those are next up on my hit list. (laughs) What can be made now with the tools that we have that's available? Um, but that's just kind of like looking ahead as well. So I would have to say, and it's not even a specific visual effect that's coming to mind, the level of like early virtual production type things that they were doing uh, back in 2010 was really fascinating and truly groundbreaking. I think a lot of, there's just, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, this is groundbreaking and this is game changing and this is innovative. And people love to throw around those buzzwords all the time. But how many of those things actually measure up to a true innovation? Mm-hmm. And it's like, are you just talking about features for things? Or are you talking about like, this is, has been this way for 500 years and now we're doing this this way because we have this. And so I think, yeah, there's, there's just a lot, of the, a lot of the hype. And I'm generally like somewhat energetic. I'm, I'm definitely a positive person. 
And so I can get hyped up as well, but it's, I think it's a, an interesting balance. If you just kind of view the landscape of any social media influencer or a large brand that has a face that you're trying to, you know, they're trying to sell something or whatever. It's like just this level of we've introduced the most innovating t-shirt of all time. And I'm just like, press X to doubt. I think that <laughs> that meme. <laughs> yeah, I remember that meme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what is your dream project? Like any dream, like any film that you would like to be a part of, not the lie. Any film. <laughs> any film. Okay. Uh questions. I'm a, yeah. <laughs> I'm a massive, massive Star Wars nerd. Yes. I think it, it's funny how that's become like, oh, that's a cool thing now to be a Star Wars nerd. But it's like <laughs> hasn't always been <laughs> so, so thanks disney for uh for making that mainstream but anything really anything in the star wars universe uh i'm a big fan of even the films that aren't as great as others uh people hate it's still continuing like that story the canon story and telling a story in this world that i think is just so rich with detail and is never going to run out of new stories to tell. And so as we see, you know, the book of Boba Fett, the Mandalorian, all of these other like side uh, avenues of stories that are being told, any of those kind of projects excite me. So I would love to have the pleasure to personally work on some of those in the future. Um, outside of that, I'm a big fan of Christopher Nolan as well. So yeah, Same. I guess those will, those will be my only two criteria is... No, I would say same for me, honestly. <laughs> so yeah. Chris nice. I love Chris Nolan. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I don't know, just very forward thinking in his storytelling. And I just have a lot of respect for, mm-hmm. yeah, it's not, I feel like too many people director wise just play it safe for box office numbers. And I believe that he's one of the few that are just like i'm going to try something completely different because this is the story that i want to tell and that and that's what i appreciate it's like i respect the craft and respect him trying something new instead of like okay here's what's gonna happen you know he's gonna this hero's gonna run into a villain the hero's gonna win okay cool we're happy we go home like it's like all these other stories that my mind is having trouble keeping up with i just appreciate those in a different way i think well, yeah, same. Obviously, I love his, you know, craft, his uh, directory, like how he like processes film. Honestly, so I mean, just mm-hmm. fascinating. Even like the behind the scenes, honestly, that you know, just yeah. walking. Honestly, even the yep. one that tenant up, I I love watching the behind the scenes of that one. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. Um, I think Interstellar is going to be in my top five favorite yeah. films of all time list. Same. Uh, it was the maybe the third time that I watched it. I really like. I put my phone away, and it's a long film. I just tried to like really focus and immerse myself in it. It's like my brain just almost comprehended and like almost wrapped around you know, the <laughs> concept of relativity and all of this, <laughs> all these different things that are presented there. And that was like, I almost got sick to my stomach because it was like, yeah. this is so cool. Like, I love it. I love it. Yeah, same. So you guys recently uh, lost like a subscription plan, like for Action VFX. So mm-hmm. why you think like, this is plaf. This is def- it's definitely worth the price, I'll say. But why do you feel like, you know, the things that are offered for it, that is worth it? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, a good question as well. Uh, so, our products by nature, you know, we build them for professionals. We build them for people that are working on huge films. That's why we were able to, you know, get the budgets to use red cameras and all these newer technologies. And the hard point for us is how do we? continue to offer things that make that accessible for everyone, even though, you know, the price point for entry traditionally has been a lot higher. And, you know, we deliver ProRes files with alpha channels and R3D files and open EXR files. And until I got into this business, I didn't really think too much about how expensive it was to, to serve downloads, especially, you know, to hundreds of thousands of people on a consistent basis it's always trying to balance out like how, how much can we give away without losing money? <laughs> I think is the, the question that we usually ask when it comes to like a product. And so we're always trying to find that value trade-off. The subscription model, what that allows us to do is 
create more recurring revenue so that we can plan our download costs, everything else. And this is just like from an internal you know, business perspective, we can plan all of that out so much better throughout the year that we actually can offer more things than not knowing when someone else is going to you know, pay $10 or, or however much. So that helps us plan a little bit as far as shoots and uh, just growing the business and growing the company. But it also lowers that entry point for new users. And I'm really excited. Like what we have now is the subscription model is kind of like our V1. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to some of the new things that we're rolling out such as, um, and we haven't talked about any of this publicly yet. So uh, like a free for subscribers thing. So we're hoping to start launching new products that are free if you're a subscriber. But if you're not a subscriber, then, you know, they're just going to be paid like normal products. Again, that kind of helps us offset those download costs, but still bringing value to being a part of the subscription. And yeah, there's just some things like that, that we're continuing to offer. Uh, It's like, how do we continue to beef things up and how much value can we truly bring in one offer, one experience? And so we're adding a ton of different things you know, we've had like a money back guarantee, you know, if that's what you want to call it, like hundred percent satisfaction. If somebody comes back and they're like, Hey, this sucks. I don't like it. Which very, very rarely happens. Like we give them their money back. And we've always done that because we think that's the right thing to do and <laughs> running a business. And, but because of that, like we haven't made that publicly, you know, we haven't had it on the website of like, Hey, 30 day money back guarantee or you know, 100% satisfaction. If you don't like it, let us know. We'll give you your money back. So it, it's all of those things of just kind of polishing how we present the things we've already done, but doing it in a much better and more official way because um, we're very much still a small team and we're growing a lot. Uh, we're at the point now where we have a marketing team and a people and operations team and, you know, they do human resources stuff and, and business stuff. So it's really cool to see how we've grown from our CEO and myself in the second bedroom of his apartment (laughs) where we worked for, I don't know, eight months uh, before getting an office. Mm -hmm. And now to the point where, you know, we just bought a studio uh, that's pretty close to where our offices here are. And yeah, I'm, I'm so excited about this next year. We've already started moving into it. So if you think that Action VFX has done a lot up until this point, just know that we haven't even had our own studio or our own place to, to work, really. And anytime we've shot something, it's had to be at a studio that's about you know 35 minutes from us. So we have to take all of our gear there. And it's a multi-day thing, planning huge explosions and fire and all of that exciting stuff. But the fact that we now have that ability to just consistently do that Um, 2022 is by far going to be our most ambitious year as a company. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I know it's the beginning of the year now, but I'm, I'm just excited to, to hop in and start executing on some of these things that we've been planning for a while. So what is your favorite behind the scene moment of making your stock footage of your products? Like one of them, like you can say like a behind the scene moment. One that usually comes to mind. That's always really funny. Uh, well, okay. So there's two. One, we had <laughs> we built a, a full size pool. It was 30 feet and it was massive. So we were going to be doing some like large scale water explosions inside of them. And we built that, came back the next day and the pool was gone. <laughs> and it had actually exploded, not in a way that we had intended. Um, and it was just complete. I mean, the liner was just flat. Water was everywhere. Um, it, it was, it was an absolute mess. And it's just because we had moved it a very large pool. So we reassembled it, filled it up, and then it just exploded. Uh, so we had to go to Walmart because we were rolling the next day, had to go to Walmart, buy a new pool, set up a second pool, um, and (laughs) be able to, then blow that one up. So that was a a really fun and also extremely stressful time of, okay, we have cameras rented. We have all this other stuff. We're walking in to shoot and now we don't have a pool. So how do we, how do we make this happen? That was a a pretty funny story. And then the next one that's coming to mind was uh, it was for some of our blood effects that we had. So I was having to set off screen. It's again, before we had like product creation people that 
know what they're doing. It was just me like <laughs> acting, acting silly. So I was having to be in like this blacked out suit and I was holding this special effects uh, squib and it was shooting blood up in front of this screen that we had up. It was outside. And as a result, it just like came back and like would just land on me every time. <laughs> and so it got to the point where like my uh, mask was building up. And so I was having trouble breathing and uh, oh, yeah. it was funny. It really was funny. I just had, I mean, blood all over me. I was on my way home and I had to stop for gas. And so <laughs> I hopped out and I, I looked up across the pump, you know, that like just awkward moment where you're filling up <laughs> gas and you look up and you make eye contact with the person on the other side of the same pump you're on. Yeah. It's just really awkward. And I'm a socially awkward person. Anyway, I look up and glance and it's a, like a police sheriff <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I had like fake blood all over my hat that I had on. And uh, I mean, my hands were stained and it was all over my clothes. And I just like look up and then look back down and fill up my gas. And he didn't even like bat an eye. I was kind of, I don't know. I was kind of disappointed for my safety. But at the same time, I don't know, maybe it looked like paint or something. But still, keep an eye out. That's what I thought you So who inspired you as a filmmaker? So I have already mentioned uh, Christopher Nolan. I think he is um, one of the biggest and John Favreau uh, would be the other one. Just continuing to pick up all of these other stories with The Mandalorian and being able to craft and create them in a way uh, that just is truly captivating. But it's also so true to the original line of storytelling. So, yeah, I would I would say somewhere between the two is one of the most inspiring. Uh, So favorite movies and TV shows for you? Favorite movies and TV shows. Oof. Okay, I uh, mentioned Interstellar. I'm just going to rattle off some that are in my top 10. Um, Into the Spider-Verse. Ooh, okay. This is in my top 10. There's a movie, pretty old movie with Joseph Gordon-Levitt called Brick. Oh, yeah, I know those. And that's that's one of my favorites because early on, that was that was a pretty, pretty like transitional moment for me and my thinking of how I viewed films uh, of just developing different character types and just going a lot more into detail of my personal analysis of how I was able to view them. So that would be it. Uh, another one for me. And what else? Dark Knight's got to be on there. That's just kind of a default. Seven Pounds. Seven Pounds is also another one. Will Smith. And another oldie but a goodie. Last one I'll mention is John Q. Uh, Denzel Washington. Very, very emotional film, but it's just, it gets me. It gets me every time. <laughs> um, I think it's, I think it's a great one. Um, so I have two more questions and then we'll wrap it up. So I don't okay. take your time. <laughs> You're good. So do you have anything like coming up, I know you said about the studio that you're allowed to, you know, anything new that's come up for action VFX. Yeah. Um, so a lot of, a lot of new things going on, actually. Um, we just started the development process of this uh, job board. And so I mentioned that earlier. Uh, we don't have a set date on that or anything yet, but that'll just be another community resource that we're continuing to roll out. Uh, we've also recently launched in collaboration with Undertone Effects, which is a real-time visual effects company. We've launched a new product line that is Action VFX meets real-time effects. And so if you're working inside of Unreal Engine or Unity Engine, uh, those are kind of the two that we've just come out of the gate attacking. And our first product with that is real-time fire assets. And so instead of you know our 2D stock, they're actually pre-built on particle systems. They're fully 3D. Uh, you can change the size of the smoke, the you know amount of particles, just all on sliders in real time inside of Unreal Engine. Uh, so that's something that I'm really excited about. We've been working on that for about a year um, at this point. And we're hoping to start having some more consistent releases on that. Uh, but back in December was when we really announced that new partnership and what that looks like. And that's just going to be the future of visual effects anyway, uh, just moving towards real time, you know, rendering and all of that. But I'm really excited to go ahead and start in that direction as a company of those are some investments we've been making for a while now, but it's really cool to, to be able to start sharing those publicly. And so 
first pack was fire. We're going to be doing a lot more like gun effects because people need a lot of gun effects, especially in real time, uh, you know, storytelling. And what else? Lots of products, lots of products, lots of products. <laughs> so lots of products, <laughs> lots of products. If you didn't, if you didn't catch that, lots of products. All right. I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> no no that's that's awesome honestly i'm just looking forward honestly for action vfx for this year honestly i i'm already excited honestly even just like you know hearing this during the interview honestly it's already getting me pumped <laughs> uh, that's, that's awesome thank you so much and yeah it really it really means a lot and it's so cool to see other people as excited about the stuff we're doing as we are because i mean we wake up every day like excited to get to the office, excited to get to the studio because we know what we're doing connects to something bigger than each of us. And Action VFX isn't me. Action VFX isn't Row. It's, you know, this ideology that um, we truly can be the best of the best in the visual effects space and continue to work to provide tools that that don't exist yet. And that's that's the goal for us. So this is kind of a, you know, kind of turn question, I would guess. Uh, so you have any questions you want to know about me personally? Ooh, uh, yeah. Flip the tables. <laughs> flip the tables. So we we chatted for just a second before we started recording. Uh, so I know you're from Rhode Island. Hmm. Let's see. What would you say? What would you say is your favorite current software related to visual effects? Could be a plugin. Could be an editor. And why? No. I- I like for software wise, I use, I use like, you know, all Adobe thing, DaVinci, honestly, I'm trying to get mm-hmm. learned up. I love the plugins for like DaVinci. I would say, honestly, for me, I would say DaVinci. I'm trying to dive in that more. Yeah. So. No, yeah, definitely. Uh, so just like resolve. The resolve. Yeah. Or, resolve. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a solid answer. Cause it's very versatile. Like mm-hmm. there's so many different components and I feel like they've done a lot of things right over the right. years uh-huh. of being able to acquire different you know, companies and kind of merge them into that product, that more of an all-in-one solution. (laughs) So yeah, that's cool. I've been, we have some resolve artists here. I mean, in my opinion, every artist here is better than I am. (laughs) It's like, that's why they're here is (laughs) because I am terrible at, you know, making stuff. And so it's, it's cool to be able to lean into their strengths as a team and, but yeah, some of the stuff they've been able to create inside of Resolve has just been fascinating. And knowing, I'm also very big on being software agnostic. So yeah. what I mean by that is if After Effects is the best tool to clean up stock footage, then that's the best tool to clean up stock footage. If you know I need something planar tracked using Mocha Pro, then that, you know, in my opinion, is the best planar track. So all of these things are just tools uh, in any artist's toolkit. Um, I think some people get way, way hung up on, no, this is not done in flame. And, <laughs> and it, it's like, it, I think it, it kind of discourages me in a way, but it's also a good teaching opportunity for me to hopefully encourage people of, if you're focusing on the principles of what the software is doing, then that's the skill set that's going to carry you on when the software, the technology changes. And it's not going to be as much like I'm getting nervous because people aren't rotoscoping as much anymore. So they might not need an artist. It's like, there's always going to be a need for things, but the landscape is changing. So how can you leverage that to be in a more long-term sustainable thing as technology changes? And it's the, it's the principles, it's the foundation, which is exciting uh so that is it for the fire film podcast i'd like to say luke thank you for your time and honestly thank you for coming on it was an honor to have you be a part of this project podcast yeah thanks so much zach i really appreciate you having me here um if you guys want to check out action vfx uh, you can find us at actionvfx.com um, i'm also on linkedin quite a lot probably too much uh find me there and uh instagram at luke thompson film at action vfx official and Yeah, reach out. Let me know if there's anything I can ever do uh, for you, Zach, or for anybody listening. Uh, As I've said throughout this podcast, we really want to leverage our platforms that we have to showcase artists, to uh, just leverage artists to be empowered and to be able to have the same professional tools um, that their favorite studios and favorite movies are using. So thanks so much for having me, Zach. It's been it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure too. Um, every link will 
be in the bio for you know loops so everything will be there for you for, for everyone to check them out so 